Good morning. My name is Mike Lindsay. I'm a state soil scientist for NRCS in Louisiana. Uh, with me is Chris Carell, the state agronomist with NRCS in Louisiana. And what we'd like to talk to you today about is uh, uh, soil health. And we're, we're going to be demonstrating our rainfall simulation unit, which, which simulates a, a rainfall event. And we're going to look at erosion under different uh, relative amounts of, of cover on soil types. NRCS has become involved with the soil health initiative na nationwide and we're looking at things that, that improve soil health across the board. Primarily one of the, one of the major issues is trying to keep uh, cover on the ground all the time, plants growing, uh, diversity of plants, uh, disturb the soil as little as possible and the I primary idea is to try to build organic matter in the soil. But back to the rainfall simulation uh, unit here. Uh, what we have are uh, uh, soil pans uh, uh, packed with soils. These are identical soils taken from within about three feet of each other. This pan simulates uh, a natural vegetative cover, thick vegetative cover. Uh, the other two on the other extreme, the pan that's been uh, heavily tilled simulates heavily tilled soil and something intermediate a, a, a soil that has been tilled but it has a, a, a residue cover on it. And we're going to look at ideally the differences in amount of, of, of under our simulated rainfall, amount of runoff and amount of fil infiltration and uh, flow through into the soils, uh, simulating soil uh, water storage and availability for plant uptake later on. And additionally, if you look at these pans, they're about two inches thick. And the ideal soil would have about 50% pore space. So with a 50% pore space in a two inch pan, you would think a one inch simulated rainfall would totally saturate that soil and you would start to see a flow through if every drop of water went into the soil. So what we're gonna do is in a minute, we're gonna turn the rainfall simulator on uh, and we're gonna watch. And when we get about one inch of, of simulated rainfall on there, we're gonna cut it off and, and look at the results. What you're looking at is the difference between, again, tilling your soil and what people think is loosening it up to improve infiltration, keeping residue on the surface, which you may do with undercutting tools. There may be some tillage involved, but again, you allow some residue to remain on the surface. And what we're doing here is simulating, say, a cover crop that you're planting during the winter or again, dur you know, during the growing season or right before, right after your cash crop. What's happened here, if you look at the jars, and again, we'll take them off for you, is that the majority of the water that we've applied is run off of the field. Very little infiltration has occurred, and most of the water that's being applied either by rainfall or through your irrigation system is being lost. Not only are you losing water that you're applying, but you're also losing topsoil. The precious topsoil that you're trying to build is being lost along with all the nutrients. The nutrients and organic matter that's being built up in that surface few inches is being lost to nearby waterways. And I can't say this enough, but water quality is probably the number one resource concern right now that the Ag Center as well as NRCS is dealing with across the country. So just know that's very important you to keep that topsoil, that organic matter, and those nutrients on your operation. You can see just by leaving a little bit of residue that we have quite a bit more uh, infiltration. You can see the difference between bare soil and just a little bit of surface residue. What that surface residue is doing is protecting the soil and again dissipating that energy from the raindrop, allowing it to slowly infiltrate into the soil. And those very small particles instead of being dislodged and blinding off those pore spaces that allow infiltration, they're just allow it's allowing the water to slowly infiltrate. And I mean, you do have some infiltration. This is kind of a in between or, I mean, it's okay, but it could be better. And you can see there is some flow through into the system. This is water that you're banking for later on, and this is your water storage capacity. And you can see the best system is again, to keep a living root growing throughout the year. And the best way to do that, in addition to obviously growing your cash crops, is to plant cover crops. And cover crops will not only 
help you improve infiltration year round, but they'll also help you build organic matter, and it's organic matter that's responsible for holding the soil structure in place, keeping it intact, and maintaining that water holding capacity that's so important for, again, taking advantage of irrigation water that you apply or Mother Nature's rainwater. What you just saw is not only applicable, applicable to large-scale agriculture, but also very applicable to your, to your vegetable operations, anything else that you're growing out, even small-scale operations, you can take these same principles and apply them to what you're doing. On your vegetable operations, some of you have the option of moving the area around that you plant from year to year. This is also a great time for you to plant cover crops. In doing that, you can bring a different root system and supercharge that system, not by just allowing annual weeds to come up or volunteer plants to come up, which may not produce as much biomass as cover crops, but you can choose what's planted out there and plant something that you know you can control, produces a lot of biomass. You can control how much the root diversity you have. And in essence, instead of maybe a three crop rotation, you can build in a 12, 15 crop rotation. So just think about that maybe planting two years in one area and that third year planting a cover crop, letting it go out, maybe naturally senesce or terminating it around uh, the, the first flower. And what you'll find is that that following year after that cover crop, you'll reap the benefits. What you're seeing here, this dry spot in the center, is what you could expect to see across your entire field. There is some side creep going on in this tray, and that's one of the limitations of the equipment. But what you, what you see, it being dry in the center, represents infiltration in a field that's been heavily tilled. But you can see by having just a little bit of residue on the surface, you get a little better infiltration, really a better compromise than having nothing covering the soil. In a bare soil in a field, you wouldn't have this effect where you had forced infiltration. You would, you would retain this effect until you had uh, standing water on the soil or a, a very long duration rainfall. You'd have to have a, a positive head of water pressure to drive that water in. Uh, where you didn't have runoff any longer. In the tray that had what would represent a cover crop, you can see that all the water infiltrated. And this is what you would see, again, as your water bank going into those periods of time where it's very dry, especially important on crops where you have uh, little access or no access to irrigation. So again, you want to take advantage of what Mother Nature provides for you. Just having a two or three crop rotation, you can have a 16, 15, 14, many, many crops within a single year. Very diverse root system, and that diverse root system and diverse soil ecology is gonna help you take care of problems with insects and disease. Kind of in summary, uh, the four primary soil health principles that we try to discuss and impart to people is uh, Plant diversity, the more plant diversity the better. Plant diversity leads to microbial diversity and overall soil health, uh, cycling of more diverse nutrients, more organic matter accumulated in the soil. Uh, disturb the soil as little as possible. Uh, again, this is a perfect example of that. It was, it was tilled to oblivion. Uh, as, as minimal disturbance of the soil as possible is best. Try to keep a plant, a living plant, on the on the soil year round to protect that soil. And year round here in Louisiana, we have enough biological activity that you can grow plants almost 12 months out of the year. Keep those nutrients uh, cycling through those plants up into the uh, surface of the plant. And when it senesces, you're recycling your nutrients thoroughly again. Uh, when you can't grow a, a, a cover crop a year round, a live a living plant. At a minimum, try to keep the soil covered with some type of material, uh, obviously mulch or other crop residues. So again, keep the soil covered. And those are the four primary soil health principles that we try to impart to people. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about soil health, cover crops, or conservation, 
please come into any one of the NRCS field offices near you or LSU Ag Center Extension offices and ask us for a little bit of assistance. We'd learn to, love to hear from you and learn a little bit more about what you're doing. And if it's something worth sharing, we'd be more than happy to share what you've learned about soil health with the rest of Louisiana.